Hello people, and welcome back to part 34 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines, our vanilla tutorial Let's Play series. And finally, it's plazas and promenades time, <laughs> we've finally got to play with this, oh my god. So, the downtown hasn't been pedestrianised yet, but by the time you guys see this episode, it would have been pedestrianised on the live stream. And now, we're back in the Noob Yoke episodes, it's time to make a pedestrian stadium, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Uh, lots of cool ideas here today, so let's just get into it, shall we? Let's build a pedestrianised stadium in City Skylines with the Plazas and Promenades expansion. Alright guys, so let's start building our first pedestrian area, shall we? So, before we can actually place anything from Plazas and Promenades, we do actually need to sketch out the pedestrian area first. So, let's come into our Districts tool, and then we'll get this painted out. Super. So we've got our pedestrian area in. Looks like I have just lost a little bit of power connectivity here. Will that fix it? Should do. Yes, there we go. Fantastic. Cool. So, yes. Big wide flat area. We've got our pedestrian area painted out. Uh, so I'd like to start by placing in a little small pedestrian area service point, of course. And we now have new vanilla roads. Oh my word. Yes, please, everyone. <laughs> such, a, such a cool free update, right? To have new roads in the game for the first time in like seven years, right? Apart from the DLC roads, of course. But uh, yes, nice new vanilla roads to be enjoying. So I think I'm just going to cut away a little bit of land here for all of my uh, service point assets to sit on. So this area isn't going to need a vast amount of service points just because of what's going to sit here. It's very plaza -y. it's very stadium and open air, so there's not that much zoning that's going to need to be attended to by the service points. So let's go ahead and place one down. We're going to start with our small pedestrian area service point and we're just going to leave this here for right now we'll come back to this at a later date and decide what's going to happen but it's going to give us cargo and garbage capacity service for the area today very nice cool so let's wrap up this road let's give this a little boundary and then we'll just sort of worry about that at a later date put away a little bit of land here and then there we go so because we're in the tropical theme on diamond coast here i think i'm going to stick to the sandstone roads for this build just because it looked quite nice Alright, so we'll go for these. So I'm going to come out by 10. Now we are coming down a very slight elevation here, but I think that's going to be okay. And then after that 10 road, I think what we're actually going to do is upgrade a side street into a pedestrian bus road, because I do want some buses coming through this area. And then after the fact, I'm going to do another stretch of 10. And then I know that this first section here uh, must now become bus lane as well, so it can access the bus roads out on the side here. You could also force them out of this intersection here, but it's already a little bit busy, and I don't really want to destroy uh, the symmetry of the diverging diamond interchange, so we'll try and leave it untouched. But this is going to give us a really sort of cool sense of centralisation, which is something we're also fond of, right? Cool. And of course we can upgrade these trees as well. Let's go for perhaps some of our content creator palm action. Always a firm favourite, isn't it? Perhaps some date palms. we we'll do some Californias. Right. Possibilities are endless. So in order for us to unlock some of the buildings here, we have to hit a cell land value. Now ideally, I would like the large fountain plaza uh, to be unlocked here. So I think we're going to just kind of cheese it a little bit. So we're going to draw out a big road, and then I just want to spam down some buildings here uh, in order to hit that land value. So if we have a look at the area, that unique building is going to give us 57 entertainment cells. And how much do we need for the plaza? It was about 300, I think. 380 and we currently hit 71. Okay, so with that in mind then, I think we might as well just spam down a whole bunch of unique buildings temporarily until we can hit the requirement for the plaza. That takes up to 175. There we there. Let's see how much the plazas and promenades plazas actually add onto that cell value for us. Just interested to know here, we'll run some tests together. 223. Okay, not too bad. However, if you are interested in seeing what unique buildings look like along a pedestrian road, then here you go. Right. Also not too bad, is it? Especially this one here. It blends really nicely with the concrete to make a nice little pedestrian plaza, doesn't it? Very nice. Lots of possibilities with this DLC, everyone. Lots of possibilities indeed. Okay, so that's 342. Um, oh, there you go. We've unlocked it. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So, let's delete all this now. So, if you are wondering, uh, you can spam down certain assets in order to increase the 
subtraction values so you get some new assets unlocked. You could also do the same again with the large glass roof plaza. Yeah, but we'll do that at a later date. Cool, yeah, but what I really wanted was the large fountain plaza. So, let's come ahead now and draw in some road frames as always. Always gives us a place to establish a build, doesn't it? So, let's go ahead now and grab a large fountain plaza. That's going to sit perfectly central against my main avenue here, which is always appreciated. Let's bring this down here. Now trim off those frames. And then we can carry on that big kind of grand avenue crawl up the middle. And I'm going to be keeping them in units of 10. That's why we're drawing out and we can now really start to establish this cool sort of central plaza design, right? So cool, you know. These are essentially like part life paths on steroids. It's the best thing. <laughs> so good. So good, everyone. Goodness me. Okay, let's come back into our path roads now. Or oh, pedestrian roads. I'm not sure we're going to call these. Are we going to call them path roads? Pedestrian roads? Not entirely sure. Okay, cool. This is good. So let's have a look how much room we actually have to play with with the stadium at this point, because that's going to be uh, quite important as well. So if we place it here, that gives us not much room around the back, so that's probably where we want the stadium to sit. And again, it centralises. Yes, please, everyone. <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. So we did have a comment uh, to actually turn the stadium around so that the view out of the stadium actually frames uh, the downtown, which, of course, is sitting over there. And we would have to have it angled at this one, but I can't refuse the centralisation from the entrance of the complex. We're just going to have to do it like this. But it's a little bit of a shame, but yeah, it's not too bad. I also might rotate the stadium as well, so it faces the opposite way. I guess we'll see. We can try that out together and just see what it looks like, I guess. Now let's bring out some more dirt road frames. Let's make sure they are pedestrian road frames. Sorry, not dirt road frames. Yeah, so if we were to box it in all the way around with some frames, if we can then have a little uh, chat about asset orientation. See if we can replace it in. Doesn't like it's quite happy there. Yeah, so we can have the entrance to the stadium here. And then expose the sort of back crawl of the stadium up like that. And I think I'm sort of happy with that configuration actually. To actually have the back of the stadium exposed to the plaza. And that gives us also quite a nice drive by from the highway, you know, when people are driving past the front of the stadium here. Yeah, I think I'm happy to have it like that. A little bit bolder, but we're going to go for it, okay? Orientation is always massively important. So, let's come back into our plazas. Let's start spamming down some uh, plaza action. Let's see what we can piece together. Uh, so, I'm quite keen on using uh, this large food truck plaza. That's going to be quite nice. But also, like an ice cream plaza in here as well. That's quite tasteful, isn't it? I don't think anyone's averse to that. What I am quite keen to do with these new plaza buildings is actually see if we can encapsulate them in a little bit of a sort of piece together plaza design if you like. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got the food truck plaza there. So why don't we put in food truck plaza on the opposite side. We'll also do an ice cream plaza. Follow it by a couple of flower plazas here as well. And then we'll do, see what do we have down this side? Another ice cream one. Okay, so let's do another small food truck plaza. And because everything's so modular and 4x4, four four, or multiples of 2, I guess, everything just sits in. <laughs> it's so it's so satisfying. So good. Just all these little detailed plaza spaces in vanilla now. Just by placing them down like this. Tremendously exciting, everyone. It really is. Okay. Tremendous. I think I'm happy with that. I possibly do want to move this one over a little bit, though. I'll have a look at that in a second. Let's go ahead and just knock that over to the corner. Cool. So, I'd like to know what's going to happen with uh, this bus lane now. So, let's come back into our bus roads. Uh, and I guess one of these signs here is going to have to become bus road, which is fine. We can do that. So, let's make it this one. Now, I would like buses to come and go from this area. I'm thinking, why don't we have a little curved pedestrian bus road up here through the pine forest. I don't think that's going to be the most horrendous gradient in the world. And it now allows us to have some bus activity flowing around. 
Uh, we of course do have a new bus uh, transport hub at the compact bus station with plazas and promenades. So it'd be tremendous if we could squeeze this in somewhere as well. And if it looks like it's going to squeeze in there, is that a possibility too good to refuse, I wonder? Or we could have it sat opposite this main plaza here as well, which I think would be quite nice. Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> it's a tough decision when we're playing with so many new cool designs and new assets here. You know, do we want the bus plaza as part of the main plaza complex or just on the side here? Not entirely sure, everyone. Not entirely sure. Oh, we are starting to see some people move around now, though, however. Please, everyone. There we go. Travis Cooper. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so good. And what a wonderful asset the American football stadium is within a plaza space, right? That huge ball just dominating the sort of main concourse, I guess. Right? Very cool. Get ready for lots of blown away egg this episode, everyone. It's going to be a fun episode. Okay, so let's see if we can come onto a road guideline snap here and introduce our bus lane uh, into the area. So I think we're just going to have it here for right now. now it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this bus road here. I wonder if we want to wrap it in further bus road uh, so it actually ends up working as intended. There we go, let's try that again. Okay, and then there's opportunities either side perhaps for some detailing. But we'll see how that bus hub performs. Um, I'm actually interested just to see how sort of buses come in and out of it. So let's set up our bus road. We're going to start out with a stop here. Uh, we're going to feed it up to the suburb where it can converge with the train station. Uh, it can stop in the residential area. Also come up to the stadium. Uh, stop on this main street again as well. Then come into the intercity bus station. Bring it back down the main road and then it can just mirror its stops as it heads back down toward the pedestrianised stadium area. So where's it going to go if we tell it to complete its loop here? Okay, so they were going to come out and turn around the back road. That's quite helpful. Let's go for that then. So we'll allow them there. Right, then we'll create a new line. And then this one is going to run over to uh, this intercity bus station. But this is just going to be a direct route. So can we come in here? It's just that they don't really want to use this one here. If we add stop. Okay, so then it comes down this road. They're a little bit weird the way they turn around outside of this bus station here. It's not the most intuitive as you would think, but we can do something with it. Yeah, come and stop here, then come into the intercity bus station. And then you can come back onto the high street, stop at this intercity station. And then come back up this side, stopping alongside the quick access bus that's just direct to the stadium. And then where are you coming back in here? He's going to come back down that road and then come along here, so you also might as well stop there as well. Okay, so that should give us some buses that are activated in the compact bus station. That should work for us. I like the shape in here as well, this little kind of curvature that's coming out. Gives us some new shapes to work with with detailing, of course. Uh, I don't see why we can't also throw in a connection there as well. We just need to move the node up ever so slightly, though. Okay, so what I'd like to have a look at now is a little kind of switchback pattern that's going to come up this side of the hill. So I'm going to do a little bit of level terrain first of all, and then we're just going to flatten this out. It's probably about okay, I think. It's going to be good enough for me. Cool. And then we'll also do a little bit of slope terrain. We'll say, you know, yeah, just slope up to here. That's fine. So let's snap into the road guideline of the existing pedestrian road, which is this one here. Okay, then we'll come off our guidelines. We create a little curve up to it. Looks like four curves are going to be ideal. It's not too steep there, is it? As it comes up the hill, I'm happy with that. And then we'll keep this going for a hot minute here. Before we grab a curve road tool, come out of this junction. Actually, knock it back just a little bit here first. And then we can come up to maybe about there. And then cool. And that gives us some detailed opportunities. We can also soften this terrain out as well now. Now we've got the networks in, so we know how everyone's going to sit against that very harsh terraforming. There's lots of fencing here, lots of detailed opportunities. Oh, yes, and lots of walkability as well. <laughs> so good. 
Yes, please, everyone. Yes, please. Very exciting DLC, this one. Huge pathways. It's my favourite. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. Okay. Tremendous what things are developing here. Things are coming along. I'm fairly happy with it so far. Okay, so with this in mind, let's now bring our attention to some public transport. Or some more public transport, I guess. I would also like to change the buses here as well, though. Maybe go for, like, a bendy bus for one of them. And then we'll just change the other ones as they come into the uh, transport hub here, which is already getting use. Very nice. Buses are being used, which is good to see. Uh, yes, so there's monorail over here as well, isn't there? So let's see where we could possibly accommodate a monorail stock within the build. Um, so it'd be really nice to have it on a pedestrian street, of course, and... Is that area just going to work absolutely perfectly for a monorail station? We could centralise this within the view, but I really don't want to block the view down toward the stadium here. I want this to be quite open air and... You no know, plaza so to speak. Cool. So, let's grab this little curve tool. We don't want to come onto... Uh, a road guideline snap here. I think we will actually have in um, a second monorail stop. Maybe one that's just sort of alongside the stadium entrance here. So there's two actual stops within the plaza itself. So let's bring this down, connect it in. And then you should just be able to hop across the pedestrian road. And then we'll see if we can get a happy uh, curvature in here. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, I don't think. There we go, everyone. Pedestrianised monorail lines. Welcome to City Skylines 2022. <laughs> so good. How far has this game come, everyone? So nice. Cool. So we'll hopefully see some people picking this up as it moves back into uh, across its line. We can see a little bit of a backlog of buses here where we're just waiting for them to come through. So they will eventually stagger out across the lines, of course. We've got some super bendy boys in here now also. Wonderful, wonderful news. So let's see what else we've got to play with here. So we've always got a bunch of detailing props which we'll have a look at uh, during our detailing time lapse. We do also have the sandstone paver here. So, you know, say for example, if we had a space here where we didn't want to place in um, another plaza asset, we maybe want to do some manual detailing. Um, we can use the prop line fill, or prop line tool, not prop line fill, at uh, linear fence fill. Uh, and then hopefully just draw in uh, some cute little. Uh, sandstone pavers to occupy these spaces. Okay, so we can fill it out with sandstone paver, which then lets you come in with your new pallets. Maybe you want one of these little cubes in here, perhaps surrounded by a couple of these little modern flower benches. So refreshing to have some new props in the vanilla game. Like, seriously refreshing. <laughs> so good. Okay, maybe one of these little uh, pergola things over in the corner, perhaps. Maybe a couple of these. And then we can do maybe some of these cute little uh, planters up on the corner here. We can find out exactly where that sort of tileage ends and drop in a few little corner plazas if we like. Corner planters, I guess, not plazas. Right, and then definitely some of these uh, new lights that we've got. Maybe some of the uh, little tiny bollard looking ones with a larger one in the middle, if we can very nearly actually clip that into the statue itself. What does that look like if we put two together? And then we'll have a little brief nighttime view here as to what we think. Yes, and there we go. Wonderful little custom plazas, everyone. So good. <laughs> so good. So yeah, those uh, decals of the same stars of the road will come in really handy for doing little spaces like this. That's a very cool. Uh, do we have some more benches as well? I think we do, don't we? Yes, we do. So why don't we have some of these new benches that sit uh, in the posts against these pergolas? But it looks convincing enough, I think, doesn't it? I think it does. I think I'm happy with that. Especially in the foreground of those enormous pink seats in the stadium. Okay, so it's raining in Nubio now. What we'd like to have a look at is some water wall stuff and see how well we can integrate this into the area. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of commercial water wall on the pedestrian area itself. You don't need a district to do this, you can apply them to pedestrian areas. And then I think we're just going to bulk zone this little block right here and see what happens. Of course we can't really do residential here in this area, far too loud. With the stadium and the public transport in, residential won't survive here. So we have to do the commercial or office zoning. 
Might not be the most appropriate shapes for wall to wall, but we'll see what happens with it anyway. Don't want anything too tall either. What I am a fan of is this. Yes. <laughs> That's so good. All these little open concrete spaces. This is so hard to achieve in vanilla. Not unless you're using poor man's service painter. And it looks like we're getting this final block filled in here, does it? Yes, please. Okay, we're going to make all these historical. I'm really happy with that configuration of uh, some new buildings. Okay. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So why don't we complement that design again on the opposite side? What we are going to have to do here, though, um, is to actually pause the game and just break our bus road because we need this uh, to connect in on the node. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. There we go. That's reinstated. And again, we'll do the same. We'll just bulk zone a batch of uh, high-density commercial zoning. And let it fill the space here. We'll just see what we get. It's always exciting watching these areas grow, isn't it? Also as well, if you're interested to see what wet pedestrian path look like, then here you go. As shiny as always, right? More shine than Mr. Sheen. Okay, we got a similar sort of vibe, isn't it? Got those larger blocks in. So it looks like it's grown. Yeah, it looks like we might get another 2x2 two two here, then a 3x3. Three three. Is that the same pattern this one's grown in? Yes, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, let's do that then. Let's do that. Uh, let's also drop in some of the new service buildings here. Uh, I think we're going to go for at least a new high capacity police station um, if at all possible not sure where we want this maybe just on the corner for right now actually probably maybe up near the sort of main admin area actually might be more appropriate for this why don't we see if we can tether it onto the back uh, of this road over here and um, let's go for a small vanilla one again the one with the little median might be a slightly tighter squeeze here though with the awkward terrain as well but also we could have it there on the entrance to the actual service area itself it kind of fits perfectly next to the service point almost like an extension of the service point as well if we can enjoy a little bit of asset fuse in there i think i can enjoy that i'm just going to remove those as well it's a little bit steep there isn't it let's just bring it around the back there we go cool all right not too bad. And there we go. We have our new assets that are filled in. That's tremendous. Looks like we've got some actually repeated angles there too. Uh, with this next one coming in. Oh yes, look at that. Oh, that's so good. Oh yes, little concrete spaces in Vanilla City Skylines, everyone. So we can get some really nice designs with the wall to wall stuff in like that. That's going to frame my little fountain plaza in the middle here nicely too. Very, very happy with that, guys. Has to, has to be said. Alright. So I'd also like to bring in a little bit more connectivity. But down to this side. So I think what we're going to do is grab that terrain height again. And then just push this out along the back of the monorail. I'm going to break this connection ever so slightly. And then what we are going to do is slope for that connection to be about here. I also wonder if we might just have to do a straight T-junction. It doesn't look like they're going to curve into each other like I want them to. Okay, I think we might just do a T instead then. Okay. And then we'll end this one here. We'll again do a little bit of a slope. Uh, just from this point up to here. And then hopefully with a little bit of curve road tool. To here. So we've also got the new content creator packs as well. We will be using those in... Uh, future episodes probably not today though otherwise it's looking pretty unique pretty cool <laughs> it's not too bad for a, a first sort of plaza here is it lots of different designs going on really happy with the buses coming through uh, let's see how that little uh, compact bus station's holding up 102 in a week it's not too bad some of the platforms are definitely uh, busier than others and lots of intercity connection here as well you could also drop in an intercity station here as well if you wanted to that would totally work I think what we will also do here now is because we've got the new roads, I'm going to upgrade this six lane here into a six lane road with trees and bus lanes. We might as well use it now, we've got buses coming through here. Let's keep it going, and of course we want to make sure that we respect uh, the date palm. So let's make sure we upgrade back into those as well. But, so let's have a look at this new road with a stop on it. Uh, there should be a uh, bus stop a little bit further down, yes there we go. Tremendous. Wonderful. 
Got some people waiting for a bus here. There was a bus there, guys. You were aware, right? We'll get the next one. Okay, but new vanilla roads in. Free update stuff. Yes, please, everyone. They're good. They're just outstandingly good. <laughs> I'm so happy. As a vanilla player, like, and obviously we have access to the workshop, which is always a treat, but to have new vanilla assets is always just so tremendously exciting. It really is. Okay, but things are coming along here. It's, it's growing up, isn't it? So there's one more thing I'd like to try, which might be quite bold and indeed really quite daring. But I think we're going to try and risk it. So let's come in with a large sandstone pedestrian road. Okay, and then what I'd like to happen is to uh, come out from here. Let's do no road length. And I'd like to elevate up and to see if we can clear the highway. And we might have to remove actually a little bit of our detail in here we did. I mean, it's fine. It's only a taxi depot and industrial area. We can just move them down the road a little bit. Okay. So hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do here, right? I want to see if we can generate a layer of height within... Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, we can. We can do it. Okay. We can have this here, and then it's going to have to come out on a sort of freeform uh, curvature tool. Okay, so it is getting use. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. It might be a little bit forced, but I think we can bear with it. I do like the new chunky bridge coming over the highway, and there's plenty of clearance here as well, so... I think we're okay. We'll leave it in. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below of the elevated pedestrian bridge over the highway. Let me know if you think it's something uh, that should indeed stay within the build. Uh, however, guys, that does feel like a really good place for a detailing time lapse. Uh, there's a bunch of fencing work to do along here, of course. Fence off this pedestrian pathway and bring in some forest and plant decorations along the side. I think what we will do is actually line uh, the monorail stop or the monorail line itself, perhaps with um, a palm pattern, uh, maybe something a little, a little bit bigger, perhaps. Yeah, a little row of old California faithfuls, if we dare. Right, something along those sorts of lines here. I think it'd be quite welcome, wouldn't it? So, yeah, we'll line up public transport in. Uh, carry on curating some little plazas and promenade spaces in these areas, uh, like we have done uh, over here. Just sort of see what we can come up with, have some fun, uh, decorate the fronts of the stadium here. And then also try and give a little bit of a perimeter. And uh, perhaps some more water wall designs out in this space here. We've got a little bit more room. And then tie up the front with trees and decoration and everything else that we know and love. And some new things in there as well that we don't know if we do know and love yet. But otherwise, let's detail the pedestrian New York Stadium area. And then we'll be right back.
guys, let's have a detailing review, shall we? Uh, so I actually was getting some um, increased cargo warnings. So we've had to place down a cargo service point. Of course, this will just help distribute cargo. Uh, it was actually bottlenecking with the five trucks that are available with the small pedestrian area. I've also relocated it as well, just so they kind of sit together. They kind of work really nicely, these service points as fusible assets. So that's our little sort of admin area. And this is all we need for a build of this size. This is coping with the capacity and the demand at the minute. Also thrown in the high capacity fire station along the main road and then also dropped in at the commercial zone lander mark because we had actually unlocked this uh, through our uh, commercial zoning. Because we have so much of it, we now have the commercial landmark. And it's super cute, really nice building. It sits really nicely on this corner as well. It gives us a real sense of open plaza down here now, doesn't it? With all these assets together. This is by far and away <laughs> like my favourite build in the city so far. This could be my new favourite DLC, everyone. It's essentially, you know, just part life on drugs, essentially, isn't it? It's just the best. <laughs> it's so good. So many new pathways and the best, anyway. Uh, yes, continue to draw in some new fencing and use some of the new uh, modern uh, mid-century uh, tables here. Uh, which actually are functioning as interactable props, if you are not aware. Uh, it's these ones here. The uh, metal table set, there's a couple of different ones, and uh, they will actually attract sims for them to come interact with, and we've also got some of the glass fencing along here as well. Though it's not played super accurate with prop line tool, but you get the general impression, right? And then our bus station is getting a nice healthy amount of use here as well. 183 in a week, so lots of buses. Coming and going from the compact bus station, we've also wrapped the pine forest around the edge of the build, uh, just to help give it a little bit of perimeter, if you like. And then you have more detail in here. And then brought in another stretch of sort of parallel pedestrian and bus road uh, with some roadies in the middle and then just some commercial facing out uh, toward the stadium, which just gives us a really nice aesthetic, doesn't it? Having these bus roads go through and the commercial opposite with the flowers in between. Just tremendous, <laughs> really nice. Also drops in some uh, plazas here with some pathway in the middle, some poor man's surface painter, of course. Uh, classic designs and then also a couple of uh, part life viewing decks here. Originally placed I think they'd get a view of the downtown but they don't really from here. They were a little bit too low down. The pines kind of block the view. But I guess you can sort of see it if the wind's blowing the right direction but they get a nice view across the highway anyway. So just a nice little way to use some space before we come back into the pedestrian area uh, where we've carried on the repeated palm pattern here uh, out the front with that fencing again too. And then this just comes uh, up and over where we've also decorated the entrance onto this side of the pedestrian way with some more forest and this definitely sits in a little bit easier now with some fencing alongside it and some denser trees just helps it settle in a little bit more i think so i'm really happy with this oh here's a good police guy he's gonna use the bollards yes he is yes please oh and a hearse as well god like there's been a murder at the stadium hopefully not anything too serious but yes anyway when we come back through to this side where again that plaza pattern repeats itself and then lots of dense forestry uh, with those path lined uh, pedestrian paths or streets, roads, not sure what we're calling them yet. We'll decide eventually. And then a little roadie pattern back up onto the street that leads us into uh, the suburb we did uh, last episode. So really fun, <laughs> really fun. Just uh, a super cool build, super happy with this and uh, you know for an experiment as to how we can detail with Plazas and promenades, there's now so many new opportunities and really over the moon with our little uh, pedestrianised stadium district. And we've also got some repeated uh, wall to wall office zoning uh, in front of the stadium, or well, I guess at the back really, uh, over here. We'll see if we can move the sun around uh, just a touch so you can get a better look at it. There we go. Yes, and there we go. So just some nice wall to wall office zoning in here too. And we've just generated this really open air, commercially viable plaza space, I guess, with some manual plazas put together as well. It's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all so much indeed for watching. If you have enjoyed it, likes, comments and shares below really help me out. Even as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. If you are looking to pick up the DLC, please check out links down below to Instant Gaming. It will be on there for a pretty decent price, alongside all the other city's DLCs as well, if you are missing any. And it does help support the channel, so thanks a lot if you do end up using it. Very happy with our first attempt at a pedestrian build episode, and there are several more pedestrian builds to come. 
Uh, I want to get down onto the beach as well and pedestrianise a little bit at the beachfront. And of course, although it's not in this city yet, by the time you guys see this episode, we would have done the Plazas and Promenades livestream where we pedestrianised the downtown. So if you haven't seen that, then please go and check that out as well. The livestream VOD will be up on the channel. Otherwise, please do hang around for some cinematics of New Bioke's first pedestrian build, but I will shut up and we'll leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.